If you're new to using 360 cameras, and in particular Insta360 360 cameras, then you might not necessarily know how the Insta360 Studio app works, especially if you've only just got your camera. And the only way to actually get hold of the Insta360 Studio app, it's completely free, but the only way to actually use it and access it is to have an Insta360 360 camera or one of their other cameras. So I'm gonna show you a complete overview of how the Insta360 Studio app works, so the desktop app, so that when you're editing your 360 footage and reframing it, then you basically know how to use all the controls in there and it's just gonna speed up your workflow just knowing what everything does rather than trying to figure it out on your own, which is still a good way to do it, but hopefully this will speed it up for you and just make it a lot easier. So the first thing you're obviously gonna to wanna to do is import your footage. So I've got a few clips here. I think I've worked on these before, so I might have to just have a little play around yeah okay let me just quickly do that okay <laughs> uh, okay so before i get into the editing part i'm just going to show you what the interface is and what everything means so up here you've got all your files that you've imported and then if you click here if you've got your memory card in your pc or your laptop then you can just select all your files off here and just work off there if you've got favorite clips that you've got that you've um selected then they'll all be found in the favorites folder and then obviously this is exports so once you've sent something to the queue to be exported you'll be able to find it here so on the right hand side you've got the main menu and flow state stabilization you can toggle on or off so if you were filming and you had forgotten to turn on flow state stabilization you can turn it on here if you turn it off you can see how shaky the footage is pretty crazy <laughs> and then switch it back on and it just works perfectly it's so good then direction lock essentially keeps the camera or the view locked onto the camera so wherever the camera moves that's where the framing is going to be so if you didn't necessarily want to add keyframes and reframe your shots you could just set direction lock and it would just act like a traditional camera so wherever you move the camera the view will be So the next tab is stitching. So if you used anything like a lens guard or a dive case, the stitching is going to be a little bit off because you're introducing an extra object to the lens. So if you use a lens guard or a dive case, then you would just go in and select what you used so that it closed those stitch spaces and just make sure that the stitching is a lot better. The next thing is media processing. So if you are just doing all your editing in the 360 app and you just want to punch in a bit punch in a bit more color or a bit more clarity or you shot underwater then you can do that here i don't really tend to use these because i will take my clips from the 360 studio app and then put it into final cut and just edit it with my other footage but if you were just editing in 360 app then you can do that and one of the nice things that they've added to the app is being able to dial it in as much or as little as you want so obviously this does not look very good it looks very oversaturated and just not very natural so you can just basically if you just feel like it just needs a little pop then you can just dial it in a little bit and it won't look too crazy that's way too oversaturated for me but um yeah i guess it just depends on your scene and what you like but there is the option to just dial it in as much or as little as you want and then you've got the clarity plus so this is like adding more detail and sharpness i guess just to give the scene more clarity and again you can dial it in as much or as little as you want again not something that i really use but it's there if you need it and then aquavision basically if you're underwater it will just make the colors look a little bit better so i'm not underwater so it just looks weird so i'm gonna switch that off but yeah you have that and then when it comes to audio if you were using the x3 which has actually really good audio for example it doesn't matter which 360 camera you use but the x3 has has decent audio from the microphone so if you wanted to focus on your voice because you were talking to the camera then you can set that and it will turn off 
or it will try to get rid of the background noise. So if you're in an environment which is quite noisy and there's lots of traffic, then it will try and focus on your voice more than the background noise. And then if it was quite windy or anything like that, then you can apply noise reduction and it will try to, again, just get rid of that noise in the, in the audio. The other tab is then logos. So you can add your own logo or you can add the Insta360 logo. And once you choose a logo, you can choose where it goes. At the moment it's at the bottom. I'm just going to move it to the top and you'll see there it is at the top and yeah it just works in 360 space so yep you can add your logo or the 360 logo and you can just play around and put it wherever you want the next tab which is my favorite is the project management tab so you might have seen at the beginning of me going through this example i had my timeline looking like this and this was because i was just playing around and doing something previously and it saved my edits which is actually quite useful but it does mean that if i wanted to come in and then redo this and just create a different clip from this bit of footage that i shot instead of me having to go through and basically start from the beginning and just kind of move all these things back and get rid of all these things that I did previously, I can just create a new project, which I did, and it's reset back to default. So you can do this as much, as many times as you want, depending on how many clips you want to get from that one long clip. So it's really, really handy being able to do that. And this is just a feature that I really, really like. I'm just going to get rid of this logo. And then the last tab is basically just file information. So nothing too exciting, but it just gives you an idea of what your resolution was, frame rate, that kind of thing when you shot it. So going back over to the left where all the media files are. So when it comes to actually reframing your clips, obviously you can click and drag around the scene and you can reframe however you want, which is awesome. And one of the biggest benefits of a 360 camera. And then you can go through and you can start adding keyframes. So I'm just going to move forward a little bit and I'm going to add a keyframe here and then I'm going to move forward a little bit more. I'm just going to reframe it. Actually, just keep it there for a second. Add a keyframe and then reframe it because you're reframing on that keyframe. If I had reframed it without adding the keyframe, it would have adjusted this keyframe. So add a keyframe and then reframe. It's just something to remember. And when you add a keyframe, you've got some different options in here that you can do. So this is to do with your field of view. So at the moment, I've just got the default field of view, but you can do crystal ball, you can do tiny planet, and you can do natural view. So this is just gonna get rid of that fisheye look. So you know when you're shooting with an action camera and you use the wide field of view, you kind of get that distortion when there's lots of lines around. So changing it to natural view is just gonna get rid of that distortion. And then you can just play around with the distortion control and the field of view a little bit more and fine tune it however you want it to be and just change the angles and the rotation and that kind of thing. And then you can just put it back to natural if you feel like you messed it up. But when it comes to transitioning between two keyframes, there are a few transitions. So this one's just a linear one. So this is just gonna be quite smooth. It's just gonna go from the same kind of, just a linear kind of transition. But then you've got slip in and fade out. So this will start the movement quite fast in the beginning and then just fade out that movement towards the end make it really smooth towards the end and then you've got basically the reverse of that which is fade in and slip out so it will start off quite slow and smooth and then ramp up towards the end and then there's slip in and slip out so it will go quite quickly at the beginning and then lull in the middle and then pick up towards the end and then you've got the other direction, so fade in, it'll go quite slowly and then it'll pick up in the middle and then it'll go slowly at the end and make it smooth at the end. And then the last one, which is one of my favourites, is not having a transition at all. So if you don't want to have a transition where it's moving, looks like the camera's moving, 
you can apply no transition at all and it will just jump between one perspective to another. And I really like this because it kind of looks like someone else is filming you or it looks like you're using a multi-camera setup. So that's one of the transitions that I really like to use quite a lot. So next to keyframes is this deep track feature. And I think for this, I'm gonna to need to choose a different clip. And I'm gonna just change my project because I've already done a deep track with this. So I'm gonna create a new project just so I can start again and find where I am. So deep track basically allows you to track your movement. So if you've plonked your camera down, I'm also gonna add a keyframe so that I can stay on myself. If you've plonked your camera down on a tripod and you're filming yourself, it means that you don't have to worry about going and moving the camera when you move. So you can just come in post and you can just add this deep track feature and the camera will track you itself. So it's really, really handy. So I'm just gonna go here and then I'm gonna enable deep track. And you can see that you've got this little spinny icon on here. It's recognized that there's actually a person in here. So you can either go through and you can click and you can drag, or you can click this and it will apply the tracking for you. And then once you're at a point, you can stop and then you can watch it back and you'll see it really smoothly tracks your movements, which just saves you a lot of time when you're out and about filming. I really love this when I'm shooting BTS because it means that I really don't have to go around moving my camera and I can just put the camera down and just move around and then just do everything in post, which is just really, really useful. So next to the deep track is time shift and I'm going to need to go back to a different clip for this. <laughs> so let me go back to this clip and let's go from here. So deep, not deep track. So time shift allows you to basically speed up your footage and it's really nice because it adds motion blur. So it doesn't just look choppy and you can choose how much you want to speed it up by. So if I apply time shift, I can drag it out to wherever I want it to stop within that clip and then I can speed it up or I can slow it down but I can speed it up let's go to eight times so it applies it there and then I'm also just gonna trim it in and out so I've got my in point and my out point so I don't want this bit at the beginning and I don't want to export this entire section so what I wanted to do was just show you what it looks like when it's rendered because it won't show you the motion blur in the 360 studio app you have to export the footage first and then you'll get the motion blur once you've exported it so this is what it looks like and if you were to basically speed up any kind of regular footage that's what it would look like but the Insta360 Studio app adds that motion blur, which makes it look really good. So it just looks really good with the blur, as opposed to if you were to just speed it up without any motion blur in it. So in order to add the motion blur, it does add it for you automatically, but you can just switch it on or off here. So if you don't want the motion blur, you can switch it off, but I just think it looks better so I just leave it on and so the other thing that you have is the aspect ratio so you can go in and you can change your aspect ratio let me just flip this around just so that you get a better view so yeah you can change your aspect ratio at the moment it's 16 by 9 but if you want to have a square video you can have a square video if you want to do it as a vertical you can do it as a vertical again you can reframe and then if you want to do four by three or you want to have that kind of anamorphic look where you've got a really wide scene or a wide frame and then you've got those black bars at the top and the bottom so 
here's that anamorphic looking clip full screen you've got the black bars along the top and the bottom and you've got a really wide field of view the other thing is you've got this take a snapshot so it doesn't matter where you are in the video you can just take a snapshot if you wanted to use it as a thumbnail for example or you just wanted to get a photo from the, your footage then you can really easily do that which is really good and then this is just to preview the footage full screen so a bit of a longer video but hopefully it's given you everything that you need in order to just get up and get started in reframing your videos if it was useful do give the video a like i've put a link in the description to the next video which basically shows you how to export a 360 video so not a 360 clip that you've kind of exported as a regular video but an actual 360 video to export it for youtube so it shows as an actual 360 video for youtube how many times am i going to say that <laughs> so i've put a link in the description to that video and so check that out if you want to upload an actual 360 video but otherwise thanks for watching and catch you guys next time